everybody! Welcome back to Living Traditions Homestead. We are standing in our main garden here. It's been a couple weeks, I think, since you have been out here, since we brought you out here. And overall, this has been a pretty good gardening season for us so far, but we are experiencing some challenges. Yeah, uh, this year, has the weather has been strange. Uh, today, the high is like 73, um, but we've already had stretches where it's been close to 100, which is ridiculous here in Southern Missouri. Uh, we've had more rain and humidity during this time of year than normal. It's just been a really strange year, and I think the garden is kind of showing that. Right. So today what we want to do is we kind of want to do a garden tour, but mix it up a little bit and show you guys some of the specific challenges that we're having throughout the garden. Different types of plants are having different types of problems. Uh, so we want to show those to you and we want to uh, share with you how we are dealing with those things, how we're battling those. We know that this year there are a lot of new gardeners. Uh, in general, uh, during this past year with COVID and people being home more, more people have gotten, gotten interested in gardening, which we think is awesome. Yes. But that also means that there's a lot of people who maybe don't know some of the basics or the things that those of us who have been gardening for longer know. And we want you to walk away from this video today knowing that even though you have problems in the garden, uh, there are ways to overcome them. And not every problem means that your garden is gonna be a failure. Right, and even if you are an experienced gardener, uh, things still go wrong. Right. There are still challenges right. that uh, come up in the garden. So if you're beginning, like Kevin said, if you're just new to it and you're feeling like there are, there are challenges, now we all have them, right. regardless of your level We've of experience. We've never had a year yet where everything in the garden has gone perfectly. So that's just part of it. Right, so I am excited to show you how well things are doing, but I'm also excited to have an opportunity uh, to share with you uh, some things that hopefully you can take to your garden to make it an even better garden. And then at the very end of this video, we oh, have yeah. quite a surprise for you guys. We're actually gonna be releasing over 3,000 ladybugs into yes. the garden to take care of one very specific problem that we've been having. So we're excited to do that at the very end. Uh, we have to wait till it gets a little bit darker because it's best to release those just before dark and when it's nice and cool out. So let's get started. We're going to go row by row, show you what's in the garden, how it's doing, and tell you about any problems that we're having. So we're going to start today with our two rows of tomatoes. This row here is our slicing tomatoes. We have half of the row as Jet Star, which is our absolute favorite tomato, and the other half is Jet Setter, which is very close to the Jet Star. But we always like to plant both just in case there's a year where one doesn't do well, a lot of times the other one will. So in general, these are doing really well. And then this row is all of our paste tomatoes. Paste tomatoes are a drier tomato. They don't have all the juice in that a slicing tomato has. They're better for canning for things like sauces and things like that. This year we're doing two varieties of the paste tomatoes. We're doing opalca, which is one that we've done a lot of times in the past. And then we're also doing Salvaterra Select, which is a variety that we actually did for the first time last year, and it did absolutely amazing. Now, tomatoes are one of the plants that we probably have the most problems with over the course of a gardening season. Um, they get just a lot of problems. So we're gonna go over some of those with you today, and I'm gonna show you the solutions that, we've, that we have. The first problem that usually creeps up with, with tomatoes as they start to grow are white flies and aphids. Um, they're little bitty bugs, you'll see them uh, you know, either on the undersides of the leaves, you'll see them when you come out, and they can be quite tricky to get rid of. Uh, a lot of years we can control them with nothing other than uh, insecticidal soap, which we just make homemade. Now the insecticidal soap can be pretty effective, but it's very tedious to apply because you really need to get to every surface of every leaf in order to kill the bugs, and when you've got, you know, 70 tomato plants like we do, uh, it can really be a time consuming process. So actually this is where we're gonna be releasing all of those ladybugs later today, which is something that we've done in the past. We haven't had to do it for quite a few years, but uh, the ladybugs are actually a natural predator of the aphids and the white flies and should hopefully keep those under control. But there are a couple other things that happen with tomatoes as well. Uh, the next one that normally starts to creep up are 
army worms, which are a caterpillar. It's a big problem here in our part of the uh, state here in southern Missouri. Now you'll normally find the army worms pretty early in the season starting to burrow into your green tomatoes. So you need to be checking your tomatoes even when they're green. And then the other thing that we have problems with, which is another type of caterpillar, are the tomato hornworms. I'm sure a lot of you have that problem as well. So the product that I'm going to be talking to you about today to use for that is good actually for all types of caterpillars. It doesn't matter what variety they are. If you have a problem with caterpillars where you are, uh, this will take care of it. It's a proof for organic gardening. So the first product that we always go to for any type of caterpillar, pop, caterpillar problem on any of our garden plants is called BT. BT is short for a big long fancy name that I can't really pronounce, but it's a natural bacteria that what happens is when the worms eat it, when the caterpillars eat, a leaf or something that's been sprayed with the BT, it basically makes their insides almost dissolve and over time they just die. It is very effective. We also use this on our corn when we start to get worms on our corn um, and it works really well to keep all those worms out of the tops of the corn. Now if you're doing cool weather gardening, which obviously this isn't the time for that, but if you're growing things like cauliflower, cabbage, broccoli, and then you're getting a lot of worms on those as well or caterpillars on those, uh, BT is another it is the product to go to for those things as well. Uh, we recommend using row covers on those things as your number one defense, but BT, if you already have a problem, is a great way to kill all of those caterpillars. Now there is one other problem that we have with tomatoes pretty much every year, and we're not having too much of a problem yet this year, and that is with a blight or a fungus disease. You'll normally see it start on the lower leaves of your tomato plants and they'll start to turn the leaves a little bit yellow, it might be kind of splotchy yellow, and then you'll see it start to spread and then normally it starts to creep its way up higher and higher and higher on the plants. Now the first thing that you should be doing is keeping any leaves that are hanging down on the ground cut up so that none of your tomato leaves are actually touching the ground. That is a great way to slow down the start of blight or the start of a fungus problem. But if you live in a warm, humid climate like we do, uh, eventually blight or fungus is going to you know, get on your tomato plants. It's just kind of something that happens every year. So there is a product that we use every year, uh, not only to treat uh, once we're starting to have the symptoms, but also as a preventative to slow down the start of it at all. And that is copper. Now there are several different types of copper that you can get. Some are approved for organic gardening and some are not. So you're gonna to need to check if that's important to you. Uh, the type that we use is OMRI approved. It's approved for organic gardening uh, and it's called copper octanate. And we'll leave links to all of these products in our Amazon shop so you guys can see the actual ones that we use. Um, but again, copper octanate. Uh, we spray this, we put two tablespoons per gallon of water and we spray this on our plants. We try to do it once a week, even when there's no problems just because we know that it will help slow down the start. And then once we start to see a problem, uh, we make sure we are definitely doing it once a week, sometimes even more than once a week if we're having a big, big, big problem. Okay, but enough talking about all the problems we're having or that we could have. I actually wanna show you down the tomato row and show you how well these are actually doing this year. You can see, actually, before we go much further, we have some really nice tomatoes on our Jet Stars already. This is one of the reasons we really like the Jet Stars is because they come on super early and they just grow nice big tomatoes. And not only is there a lot of nice ones already on there, but you can see just a ton of new blossoms for a second harvest as well. So we'll be picking tomatoes, you know, starting in no time and then honestly ongoing for the rest of the summer. We're excited this year to you know, do all of our normal canning, but also have some tomatoes to try in the freeze dryer and experiment with different ways to freeze dry them as well. All right, let's move over to the pepper row because I know Sarah wants to talk to you guys about the peppers. Here are the peppers. Peppers are one of my most favorite thing to grow. And so this is one of my favorite rows of the entire garden. And they're doing pretty good. You know, we planted a little bit late, so they're a little bit, uh, they're a little bit small for this time of the season, but they're getting there. Now, overall, we haven't had a whole lot of problems with the peppers. Um, early on, 
uh, they were having some issues with aphids and I used insecticidal soap on them and it took care of the issue. Now, like Kevin said, we make like a DIY insecticidal soap and it's a really easy recipe. I make one gallon at a time. I put in one tablespoon of some kind of oil, uh, like, you know, cooking oil, and then two to two and a half tablespoons of dish soap. We use natural dish soap uh, because that's just what we use in the house, but also we find that that uh, makes more sense to us since we're trying to grow things naturally to also use a natural dish soap. Uh, you just spray it on there and it really took care of all of the aphids. Just recently, I've been finding those darn army worms on the pepper plants. Now on the tomatoes, the army worms generally go inside the green tomatoes, but on the other plants that we found them on, they eat the leaves. And there is one of those stinking army worms right on this pepper plant, and I wanna show it to you. This is kind of a, a medium-sized army worm at this point. Easy to see because it's so dark, but look, it's chewing on these leaves. Uh, and so this one, I'm just gonna smash with my foot. Okay, this to me says that we need to do another BT treatment because it will just eradicate all of these caterpillars and wormy kinds of things. So really those are the only two problems that we've been having with the peppers. We're starting to see some small peppers growing on some of the plants. These are natapenos, which are the not hot jalapenos. I've seen some black beauties starting. And back here are some Ajvarsky peppers starting, which are my favorite red roasting pepper. So we're getting there. I'm, I'm starting to be encouraged. Lots of blossoms. So I'm hoping that's gonna be a good pepper year. Next up is our Clemson spineless okra. This variety of okra does so well for us. In fact, this is all from seed that we saved from other years. Now okra normally is one of those plants that we have no problems with at all. Normally we plant our seeds, we, they start to come up, and in a matter of no time, uh, we're picking okra. Now, the plants are doing really, really well this year. We're not really having any issues except for those darn army worms. Uh, this is the first year we've ever had an army worm issue on okra. I'm just amazed. I don't know what it is this year that's causing more of these uh, army worms to be around. But uh, So we'll use our BT next time we spray on the peppers and things. We'll also spray the okra again just to make sure we get all of them. But you guys, these are looking awesome. We're not picking any okra yet, but just today we started to see a few blossoms, uh, which means uh, we're gonna have okra in no time. We're gonna move on to the cucumbers because that's one plant that we are having some pretty big issues with so far this year. Now these are our cucumbers. We have half of a row, two different kinds. On this side are Chicago pickling, and then on the other side are market more. Now, we're having some problems with the cucumbers. These guys look pretty good. They don't look too bad, but the market moors have been struck by a fungus and we are trying to get it under control with the copper once a week or more. Um, I did look up the specific kind of fungus, but I don't remember the name of it, uh, but it is starting to make brown, well, it starts off as like yellow spots and then the yellow spots turn brown and then they kind of like wither away and you have holy, cucumber leaves. So my understanding is the copper will not cure it, but the copper will halt it on new leaves as long as we continue spraying them um, at least once a week. So we're hoping we get some kind of cucumber crop. Uh, we primarily eat cucumbers fresh. We don't really eat a whole lot of pickles. I'll make some pickles and I'll make some dill relish. Uh, but other than that, we're, we're not big pickle eaters. So just fresh cucumbers in the summer, if we just get enough for fresh eating and salads and refrigerator pickles, we'll be happy. Uh, but these guys are really struggling this year. Now we haven't had a cucumber ready to pick yet this year, but I've been watching one almost every day that I've come out here and it looks like it is ready to pick. So I'm gonna pick it here and show you. This is one of the Chicago pickling cucumbers. 
probably is a little bit on the big side. I probably should have picked it yesterday. Um, but we are definitely going to wash this up and eat this with our dinner tonight. It's so exciting when you start getting the first harvest of the season. You know, you, you feel like you wait forever. You plant the seeds, you water them, you weed them, uh, you talk to them and love them, and finally you get to have uh, you know, your prize from the garden. It's so sweet when you get to start harvesting the first fruits from your labor. This next row is something that's actually new to us this year. It's a type of half runner green bean called Dolico Ochio. And we actually purchased these seeds several years ago from Baker Creek Heirloom Seed Company uh, at one of their auctions that they used to do. And they're a longer bean that can either be used for dry beans or eat them like a green bean. Uh, you can see the plants are doing really well. Uh, we've really had no issues with these at all so far this year. Uh, so um, the only thing that we're doing to these is when we do spray copper on other things, we're also spraying it on the beans only because uh, beans can have some fungal issues. And by doing that, we're just using it as more of a preventative. So just in the last week they've started to blossom and just when we came out here tonight I noticed the very first beans on the plant uh, they're probably not really quite ready to pick yet but I'm gonna pick one and try it for you guys I've got a feeling that in the next week we're gonna be really picking a lot of these but I'm gonna pick one today like I said since this is the first year we're growing these I'm not really sure how big they're supposed to get before we pick them but obviously because they can be used for dry beans, they should get bigger than this. But you can see all the little beans in there. Let's give it a try and see how it tastes. Hmm. Tastes similar to a normal green bean, but not exactly the same. And honestly, maybe a little more tough. A little more fibrous, maybe. It'll be interesting to see as these grow bigger whether or not they're really going to be good as a green bean or if we're going to want to let these go until they dry up and use them as like a dry black bean. I don't want to judge them too early because we got a lot of them planted. Now next door to the new beans we're trying are our contender green beans and this is a variety we grow every year because they do so well. This is what we can all of our year's green beans from. Now these guys are doing so well and actually uh, we looks like we need to do another picking. We'll probably do it tomorrow. Uh, we did our very first major picking of our first harvest yesterday. Uh, we got two nice bowls full of fresh green beans. Uh, we're going to be eating some of those fresh in our meals, but we're also going to be trying them in the freeze dryer for the very first time to see how that goes. But we did, so we did a really nice harvest of these. So we'll have to do another one probably tomorrow, like I said. And I want to let you know that uh, we have become more active just recently on Instagram and we're wanting to use it as kind of like daily what's going on on the homestead. A lot of you miss that we're no longer doing videos five days a week on YouTube. So I think being a little more active daily on Instagram might help you feel a little bit more included on the day-to-day -day things. So make sure you check us out on Instagram uh, because we're there daily now. So. Like I said, these contenders are doing very well. Preventatively, we're spraying them with the copper because of disease potential. We're very pleased so far with the green beans. The next row is our tomatillos. We planted half a row of tomatillos this year. These we'll be using mostly to make salsa verde, which we absolutely love. We've got two different varieties planted this year. Honestly, we're having no problems with these at all. We've got a green variety and a purple variety. We've got them planted every other plant. Uh, they recommend that you do that two varieties so that you get better pollination. But you can see they're already starting to produce some nice tomatillos at different spots. And we've got just a ton of blossoms. So it looks like it's gonna be a good tomatillo year. And again, no real problems with those. This here is our full row of Canada crookneck squash. It's a winter squash that is very similar to a butternut squash, but we actually think the flavor of it is much better. 
Now we tried these last year for the very first time and I picked this variety because it's said to be resistant to squash bugs. And we always have a terrible problem with squash bugs. And lo and behold, last year there were squash bugs on them, but it didn't do anything to them. It didn't kill them, it didn't give them diseases, it didn't hurt the squash themselves. So I am super excited about how well they did. Now this year I have seen some squash bugs on them, but again, they're not causing any problems. So at this point, I'm just squashing all the squash bugs that I see and picking off the eggs when I see them on the leaves. But so far they're doing really well. I highly recommend them. The seeds for these this year, we saved back from our harvest last year, but originally we did get them from Baker Creek Heirloom Seed Company. Now last year we planted a 50 foot row just like this of the Canada crookneck squash and we got like 95 squash some huge harvest and this year you guys they're just growing so fast and they're producing so many little squash so far they're just everywhere they're so prolific and they produce the most beautiful huge yellow blossoms oh look at this one you can see how big that yellow blossom is they're just everywhere. I just love these. The next row and last row of this garden are our watermelons. We're doing two varieties this year. We're doing the strawberry watermelons, which is one that we've always done in the past. They're absolutely amazing. A nice big watermelon. Last year, I think our biggest one was around 30 pounds. Uh, absolutely love them, great flavor. And then the other one that we're doing this year is called Sweet Dakota Rose. Also a pretty good sized watermelon. Uh, the reason we're trying that one this year is because it's supposed to have less seeds and we want to put some in the freeze dryer and we thought they'd be better without the seeds in the freeze dryer so we're trying those two kinds now watermelons are one of those plants that you can have some issues with especially with bugs uh, the main problem that we have is with squash bugs and cucumber beetles and both of those can be extremely hard to get rid of if you guys have been gardening for long at all you know that a lot of the organic methods just don't do well with those um, and a lot of times it's just a losing battle especially here in our garden that's what we found is that it's always been kind of a losing battle um, but we found a product that does work really well uh, but we do use it pretty sparingly even though it's approved for organic gardening it's called pyganic and it's organic botanical pyrethrin uh, this is a very strong insecticide, uh, even though it's approved for organic gardening, uh, it's very strong in that it, it's not a selective pesticide. So it will pretty much kill every uh, type of bug that it comes in contact with. So because of that, uh, we first of all, we only use it on the plants that we absolutely need it when there's a problem. And we only spray it either right before dark or even sometimes, you know, when it's just about dark out, uh, because it will kill bees and we absolutely don't want to kill any of the bees that are around so we always try to spray this at night when a lot of those beneficial insects are already asleep so um, again this works really well for cucumber beetles for the squash bugs for stink bugs for a lot of those pests that uh, you just can't find any other way to get rid of now because later tonight we're going to be releasing all of those ladybugs into our garden that becomes even a bigger deal that we don't overspray this right now we don't even need it uh, we have this on hand we'll keep it in the house when we need it we'll use it but until there's a big problem we won't do it because this will kill those ladybugs and we don't want to do that so we'll spray very selectively okay it is late in the evening actually it's about seven o'clock it is probably the coolest night we've had in weeks. It's overcast. This is like the perfect day, evening, temperature, lighting to release ladybugs. I'm super excited. Now, uh, the ladybugs uh, we got were from Amazon. I ordered these on Amazon. Uh, we bought 3,000 of them. There are two bags like this that have 1,500 each. And they're all alive. It doesn't look like many of them are dead in there at all and we're really gonna use these for what's going on in these tomato plants. Before we can release these guys though, they need a drink and we need to encourage them to stick around and not fly away. So we are gonna spray um, all of the tomato plants lightly with just a mist of water so they can get a drink and then hopefully they're just gonna go to town eating all the aphids and the white flies that we have going on here.
Okay, here goes nothing. I'm actually a little bit nervous. I really hope they do the trick because I'm afraid of what's gonna happen if they don't do the job well. Okay, I'm just gonna tap these guys down so that I can cut the top off without injuring any of them. I think that's good. Okay, I'm gonna quickly cut the top off here, being careful not to injure any of them. They're fast buggers. Well, they're already coming back up. Oh my gosh. Okay, now I'm just gonna hold them. Let them crawl out. Be free. So the rest of this bag, I'm just gonna set right here in this branch so that they can just find their way out and crawl. Come on, little guy. Wrong way, there you go. So the rest of that bag can empty itself out right here. This is heavily infested with aphids and white flies. One thing I wanna say too about these ladybugs is that this isn't just like a one-time fix, you know, that they'll eat as many bugs as they can and then just die. If this is a nice enough habitat for them, which I really think it is, they should breed and reproduce and then potentially fill this whole garden with the ladybug nymphs and then grow into adults and breed again. So hopefully we're creating this nice little ecosystem here so they can just protect this entire garden right now. I really need them to eat all this stuff right here on these tomatoes, but hopefully they'll help the entire garden. They may even survive and reproduce next year. So this is really a beneficial thing to be adding to our garden. Well, I really think those ladybugs are gonna make a huge difference. It looks like they're really starting to spread out already. I think this is gonna be a perfect habitat for them. There's definitely plenty for them to eat. You guys, I hope you enjoyed coming on a tour of the garden with us today. Uh, I hope that maybe you learned a thing or two about some of the different things that we use to help keep the garden healthy, or at least to keep some of those things at bay as long as we possibly can. You guys, if you enjoyed this video, make sure that you give us a thumbs up. If you like what you're seeing, make sure to subscribe. And remember that the best way that you can help us is just to share our videos on your social media. Until next time, thank you so much for stopping by our homestead. Take care and God bless. God bless.